Hello, my name is Katharina Schlegel and today I'm very happy to present you about biodegradable polymers in a circular economy for our products Ecoflex and Ecovio. When we talk about biopolymers, there's a lot of knowledge that needs to be done for definitions. Our polymers, which we're usually having like polyethylene and polypropylene, are not biodegradable and fossil-based. We are all aware of that. Besides that, there are also natural polymers like cellulose or PHB, which are bio-based and fully biodegradable. New products on the market now have the same properties as a polyethylene, but are of renewable resource, the so-called biopolyethylene or bipropylene. These products are also called biopolymers. Our product Ecoflex is a fully biodegradable product, which has a fossil raw material basis. This means it can biodegrade, for example, under industrial composting, but has crude oil as resource for the carbon. We also have a compound which consists of Ecoflex and other bio-based polymers, the so-called Ecovio. Ecovio is partially bio-based, but fully biodegradable. So you know that the material resource is not the one to define its biodegradability, but the polymer property instead. So how does that fit into a circular economy? When we have a consumer, you have the technical loop where you have products which are collected, reused, refurbished or recycled and then again used to produce new products. This technical loop is often what's been thought of when we talk about circular economy. Besides that, there's a so-called nutrient loop on this planet, which also needs to be drawn in a circle. You have a product which can, for example, be bio-based or you have our daily food which we eat where we have residues like food waste which need to be collected, then brought into compost and the compost is brought back to agriculture and farming. This is extremely important because also nutrients like phosphate are limited on our planet. So when we talk about the circular economy with a biodegradable product, we usually talk about promoting the nutrient loop. So what applications do we have? We have applications like the organic waste bag or a fruit and vegetable bag we have agricultural films, packagings, but also particle forms or coated board paper. What all these applications have in common, they all support an easier collection of organic waste. We prevent microplastics by mythrown plastic waste that ends up in our organic collection, or we replace products that can otherwise not be mechanically recycled. These basic principles are true for all applications that we do promote the collection of organic recycling, prevent microplastics and do not harm the mechanical recycling of products. So let's talk about the end of life. When we have a bulk material like a bag, the polymer is cut into smaller pieces and when you have small molecules, these are eaten up by microbes, which breathe out the carbon dioxide and grow on it. When a microbe grows, it builds something that is called biomass. So when you have a biodegrading product, you have as end product carbon dioxide and natural biomass by microbes. This whole process does not need any additives. It's only done by natural organisms in the environment. And what we measure when we talk about biodegradability is the carbon dioxide, which is breathed out by the microbes. Biodegradability, so what does that tell us? We're having natural organisms which can biodegrade products without any additives. We know that in different environments we have very different microbes, comparing for example a compost to the ocean. Therefore we always need to link biodegradability to the environment which we are talking about. BSF markets certified compostable Ecoflex and Ecovio and certified soil biodegradable Ecovio for agricultural films. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Me or one of my colleagues is also present to help you in case you have questions.